The moment is here, you can stop your search, it's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, Joe, been a while, how are you doing? I'm all right. Perch, how are you? I'm doing terrible, but thanks for asking. Um... How's the heat up where you are? Are you also experiencing the death of this society? Yeah, I mean, it's, like, hot, but, like, I, you know, I still, like, walk outside. It's still, like, walk outside hot, but, you know, it's, like, you walk outside, you're in sand, and you're, like, gee, it's hot out. But it's, it's like, that level, that level. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's how it is here in Texas, too, just like that. Yeah. yeah, just about the same. Hey, you know, there's all these topics about uh, that we could get into with there's of course the Barbie movie, there's the Hellfire Gala, there's all kinds of culture type stuff. But a while back, somebody asked a question. I remember texting you about it at the time. Um, but this is like a pure old comic uh, question I think you might enjoy. And it's, uh, you know, there's all this talk about how, um, you know, the second generation of a hero or the, uh, the legacy hero gets replaced by a newer version. And we just saw, you know, there's a new Punisher out there right now. Are you excited, by the way, for the new Punisher? Uh, I'm excited that uh, my buddy David Pepos uh, has more work, for sure. Oh, okay, that's a way to answer that. Um, yeah. That's a, that's an example of a new Punisher, right? But, you know, the general thing that you hear people say is this is bad. You know, there shouldn't be, you know, the legacy hero should just be the hero. And I want to talk to you about times when this worked. There's been actually a number of different instances where this actually the the second generation of a hero or the 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 replacement hero, if you will, actually winds up being more popular or a better version of the character. And I thought, I want to talk to you about this. You're the guy who's going to know about this. The 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 one that people bring up a lot is uh, James Rhodes. The you know when he took over for Iron Man, that was a storyline. I did think that was a really great storyline. Sure, um, but there's a lot of other examples, and I remember. You remember when I threw you this question and did that call that? Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's interesting. Uh, I think one of the first things that, that comes to mind, too, it, at least for a time, I think now uh, Marvel did a lot to reverse all of that. But when uh, Monica Rambeau became Captain Marvel and, you know, you, you had, uh, you know, Carol Danvers was kind of like they kind of, I feel like it's fair to say they kind of dropped the ball on Carol Danvers for a little bit, and then they, you know, put her to the side, and then you had Monica Rambeau take over, and that whole run on Avengers with Roger Stern in particular, like, really elevated that character, and, and I think really won her over in a way that, you know, like, Carol Danvers probably didn't up till that point, and, and then they did a lot, and, and this is a very common thing for both the big two, is, uh, they finally get someone over and then they do everything they can to wreck that. Yeah. No, I, I, it's hard to look at it this way. Um, uh, but when they were at the kind of the height of the Monica Rambeau leader of the Avengers that time period, and they were, she was captain Marvel at that moment. Um, there was an argument I think you could have made in that moment that she was better than the previous two, like both, both Carol and the original captain Marvel. At that moment, what would you go that far? Um, yeah, maybe I, I feel like um, I, I might go that far up until again, it's like up until a certain point. And, yeah, and, and it started yeah, for sure. It didn't, it didn't wait yeah. backwards, but yeah. And uh, I think uh, one of the other really big examples on that uh, might be the biggest is you know, Wally West is uh, as the Flash, where they did all the hard work. Um, you know, what was it yet? Yeah, uh, Mike Barron, then Bill Loves and Mark Wade, Jeff Johns, like all really laying the groundwork and establishing Wally as the definitive flat. Like, mm -hmm. for, for a, a generation, maybe two generations of readers that that was the flat. And then they went out of their way, uh, to, to just be like, eh, what if we go back to Barry? What if we, you, you know, if, if you're thinking about this in terms of, you know, readers and appealing to readers, and now I'm spinning this into another conversation, then, okay. uh, you know, we might also want to go to, or maybe it's a whole other video. There was a time in the, like, you know, I guess more so the, like, early, mid-2000s or so, where you had the big two, and I think probably particularly DC with Jeff Jollins being like, 
I know we we've been focusing on characters like you know Wally West and Kyle Rayner and and these sort of you know like newer uh, versions of these legacy characters for like a decade or two decades in some cases. So literally no child reading comics or even teenager would have been actively reading. Like there is no one who was picking up comics as a kid that was picking up anything with Barry Allen as Mm -hmm. the flash from crisis straight, you know, for like close to about 20 years. And then, you, you know, not that they didn't do there's some Tom Fullerian stuff really. anyway, but but for the most part, that that was the flat. Yeah. And then they were like, well, what if we, uh, you know, we should what the fans really would. Um, and, and when we're talking about the fans, it's immediately people who are like older than 25 or so want it. Is Barry, let's bring Barry Allen back. Let, let's do that, at which seems like Today is is a, the kind of idea, and I'm not putting any merit on if it was a good idea or a bad idea, but it's the kind of idea that if you throw out, it feels like that that idea now would be, why on earth would you suggest that we go back to something that you have to be 25, 30 or older to even understand that character as they were coming in? I, I think that that's maybe one of the best examples um, is is Wally West because I think a lot of, like you said I think for a lot of people there's at least a generation maybe more where that was the Flash and yeah you know that was a, a I, I I don't remember and maybe I'm wrong people will tell us in the comments but I don't remember a lot of people pissed off about Wally West taking this identity um, he earned it I mean maybe at the beginning of skeptics but. Very few people are like clamoring for, you know, it's got to be Barry Allen and can't be anything but Barry Allen. And that's that's just the way it, that's the way it is. But I, I think those are, are some good examples. Um, others, I, you know. I think they they. Um, we've seen a, we've seen a few Green Lanterns that have uh, been in that position. Um, do you yeah. see, I mean, what do you think? Yeah. No, I mean, with the Green Lanterns, uh, for sure. It, it's so muddy because they, they've they gone back to Hal so many times that it's it's hard to be like, was there really a breakout? Like, John Stewart sometimes, almost. Hey, the people who watch the cartoon, right? Yeah, yeah. You had the, the cartoon, and there were a few moments in the comic where he really, like, you know, shined. Um, you, you know, as, like, in a way, like a definitive, like the definitive. Green Lantern. Yeah. yeah, but there's been, it's very rare in the comics, but it would happen. Um, Guy Gardner, I guess, if you're a big like you know, you know, JLI fan, you know, in particular. But again, always it was never really like the Green Lantern. Like you know, he might be your favorite, but it was never like oh, if, if you're reading Green Lantern, everything's like. Guy Gardner centric. And that's not really a thing. Um, unlike, you know, Wally or Kyle Rayner being the definitive Green Lantern for a little bit. Um, you know, Kyle would be the one who you would use in, in Green Lantern as having become that definitive Lantern for X amount of time. But in a weird way, it was like they brought in Kyle later than they did Wally and like. He seemed, and he got cut off sooner than than Wally as well. It was just like it was still a long time, but it was like shorter. What about uh, you know? What about Tim Drake? Was that Drake's interesting? There was a period of time. Now, one you know, some of these identities, I think they established very early on. Many people can be Robin, so it's a little bit different than than say some of these others we talked about, like like Wally West, like uh, Captain Marvel, but. Tim Drake, I think there's a point in the 90s where, again, um, was more popular than Jason Todd. And potentially there was a, you know, this, this character was was stronger than than uh, Dick Grayson. I think a similar thing, by the way, with uh, Ghost Rider as well, where you got Danny Ketch, I think, for a period of time was more popular than the original. Um, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd say that. But um, 
Well, and the interesting thing, too, that you bring up with Tim Drake is, like, Jason Todd didn't, like, it's funny because I feel like he both, in Jason Todd, wasn't quite as maligned at the time as the, like, I think there's been some rewriting of history that he was just so un unlikable and so terrible, but people tend to point to the same couple of panels of mm -hmm. him going too far. That's um, true. And, and I mean, this is another video, but it seemed like there was a lot of shenanigans involved in that, like calling that number. Um, I, I believe there were some reports that like some people had like auto dialers that were like dialing in just to get them killed and stuff at that. Thing. The and because you had to call it, it, it was it wasn't a free hotline, I think, right? Wasn't it like a well, no, it was a paid. Yeah, it was a 900 number. Yeah. So you are when you're doing something like that, you're skewing it to people that have that kind of disposable income. So you're skewing it to older readers and who might be more inclined to be like, I don't like, you know, the new, this newer Robin or I don't, you know, or I'm or that might be inclined to see a character get killed in, in a comic. So it's very difficult to determine if that was actually really something the, the audience wanted. But my absolute favorite thing about that is that first, at least the first printing, might have even been the second printing of the trade. There's that Danny O'Neill quote on the trade that's like, if they ever bring Jason Todd back, it's like a, it would be a disservice to like all of DC. It's like an over the top, like if they ever brought him back, it would be the worst thing ever. And I, I love it so much. Whenever I find a copy, I have to point it out to people at the shops when uh, I see that because it's just the I think there's um there's definitely the people people make statements like that. I mean, I remember when um what Joe Casada said, if the ultimate universe ever crosses over, it means we've completely run out of ideas. Nice. Well that's you know, that's uh that's a uh, that's great. But what are, what are, so some of the JSA characters, you think any of them fit into that where the 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 legacy character, the follow up was better than the original? This is interesting because I feel like there's a number of people, you know, not the savvy listeners of this program. No, well, sure. Of course not. Who um, don't know some of those characters. I'm not trying to say that in a condescending way, but like uh, th there are a number of people who are Zatanna fans who wouldn't even think of Zatara or, right. you know, her father. Like it wouldn't even cross their mind that this is technically like a, a, a legacy character going back to that. I don't think uh, the, the JSA did a really weird and interesting thing insofar as I, I feel like there's a lot of people who, because of how they did it, separate them. Mm -hmm. Like you wouldn't even say like Hal Jordan, you know, uh, was anything like Alan Scott. Like there's something about it that, Makes yeah. people be like that. That's why would you even count that? How is that even a legacy? That's so far very back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you know, uh, yes, with Al Scott, with uh, uh, you know, a bunch of those people. The, the Golden Age Flash, same thing. You know, uh, you know, uh, there's like Our Man. I think the uh, the original Our Man was a lot less popular than the follow-up Our Man. Not that he's yeah. like a major character, but still. No, but I love that it's been forever since I read it and DC never collected it. But I love that, like, what was it, Tom Pyre doing that, like, uh, the robot hour man yeah. um, teaming up with Snapper Carr. <laughs> like, that was so great. Yeah, I know. I mean, a lot of those comics, I, I do think that, yeah, as the both, I mean, they, this is a separate discussion in video completely as well, but. Um, there's it, what's kind of surprising to me is everybody's searching for new IP and, and to get things out to the movies and everything else. And DC's sitting on the Justice Society and a legion of superheroes, which have dozens and dozens of superheroes. I, I, like, are you slightly surprised when Guardians did well? DC's like, no, we can't do a legion of superheroes movie. <laughs> wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be kind of obvious? Yeah, it's 
it's weird um to not like it seems so easy to do, and yet we've spent decades of people being like, "I don't know what to do with the Legion." It's uh, it's it, it boggles my mind. It it doesn't seem difficult, but it turns difficult because so many different people have weird niche ideas of what the Legion are should be, yeah. and you know, nick certain ideas, go for others, and then they get scared and go for like. Uh, old timey kind of legion and and miss what made the legion popular and all sorts of things it's uh it's a mess but uh that is a discussion for another time but yeah how about, <laughs> how about, how about mr terrific i think undisputably the the second he, it is a second version of character right is is way more popular than well, yeah, wasn't like the first one like a backup in like Sensation Comics and like the like, Golden Age or something? Yeah, I mean, I yeah. think they played around with that character a little bit, but I again, and I think by the way, I think you're right. I, I would wager most of the people do not realize it's a second generation character. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, absolutely. There's a lot of those characters that people don't realize are uh, you know second generation characters, but yeah, you know, and again, it's not like you can't even blame you know. The, the readers of the audience for that, though the publishers are in putting out material and reminding people, letting people know these sort of things. They're, they're not reminding people that like that character, that there's more things they can spend their money on with that company. Yeah. Well, they don't like money. <laughs> you know, because of the communism and everything, I think. Oh, yeah, of course. But, um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you got that. There's, there, there's some other ones. I mean, well, let me throw this at you. So back over to Marvel. I think, uh, and granted, we're playing with the name now, so this is kind of cheating, but I think Kamala Khan Miss Marvel is potentially more popular than Cap uh, Carol Danvers Miss Marvel. What do you think? I would think so. At this point, name recognition, I think, is, is higher in the association. I, I think even, like, you know, legacy readers at this point would just, you know, if, I, I don't think there's pushback from... Carol being Captain Marvel and you know Kamala being Miss Marvel. I, I don't. Out of all the things that people seem to you know latch on to, I think I think Not for that. the most part we're all good there. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll find out. But uh, <laughs> that feels like a solid one. I don't know. So, is there a common thread here? So as we as we kind of wrap all this up. Um, you know, the, both companies continue to do this. It's a brand new Hulk. It's a brand new Hawkeye. It's a brand new Batman, et cetera. They're always, this is, this is a gimmicky story idea that seems to have replaced a little bit. Somebody's going to die. And now it's somebody you don't expect has got this costume and name and it will last for a few issues. But, um, some of these, some of these did work and it strikes me that, uh, the, the, the secret, if you will, of why it worked is simply, there was an actual long form story. And the company's committed to it, and it 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 wasn't a shocking limited series of somebody new. I mean, including like Ant Man. Um, oh, you know, obviously, yeah. How do you think? Yeah, you think so? that, that's a bit more than uh, than Ink Pim? I think at this point, probably, especially because uh, of everything they did to Hank Pym in the comics, and um, him, you know, just being a guy in the movies and, you know, Scott Lang, I mean, it's all right. How do you know? Yeah, I you know, love that. But yeah, I, I would say that uh, another one who also came to mind is, um, you know, the question of Renee Toya taking over after Big Sage. Um, I, I think, like, that's a weird one because they haven't really used her very much. Yeah, though, we do like switch and then a little bit of a story and then kind of forgot about it a lot. Yeah, so and she pops up here and there sometimes, but um, yeah, unfortunately, I, I think for that Renee Montoya version, that that Denny O'Neill run, uh, Dennis Cowan on uh, on the question from the eighties is so incredible that I, I have a hard time not seeing that always eclipsing anything they do with. The Renee Montoya version, unless they really commit to to a story and working with their own and, and something bigger, and it, I, it doesn't seem like that's in the cards right now. But 
And but you said it yourself. There was a run there in in the you know the the comic that you like. There was how many issues is that? Is over like thirty six plus. Um, that they did the Blackest Night issue. Plus there were like quarterlies and annuals. So like you chalk it over forty issues. Yeah. So that's kind of the the end. I mean, Rene Montoya has not had that many pages anywhere close to that. And so anytime an, a, a comic comes out, it's just kind of one-off. It doesn't really feel like they have a story. It's like, hey, here's a character. Let's give them some comics. There's not really any reason to be published. This time. They're just yeah. putting them out. So you, you have to do that. Or you take the Scott Lang route, which is, okay, you take the original character, you have that character abuse their wife, and then you replace the character. Yeah. Isn't it funny how... Hal Jordan and, and both Hal Jordan and Jean Grey going completely insane and murdering people was somehow easier for people to get over than Hank M hitting his wife that one time. I, I don't get that at all. And this has been a topic in, in many a con because, eh, you know, it's like I said, you know, hey, you could do something with, you know, Hank M. It feels kind of weird that you try and kind of half heartedly do some redemption things. You slide him right back into evil and everything else. It's like, well, he's he's irredeemable. It's like, yeah, but you, you know, and this was when they were starting to do the Jean Grey solo series. It's like, you are starting a solo series with somebody committed genocide on the planet. Like, I mean, that it seems worse. Yeah, um, they can't stop making Venom comics. Yeah. He's eating people. Yeah, like a lot of people murdered them. Like so many people. And there's no problem, like, they still do crossovers where, like, in, in King of Black, you know, Venom shows up and Captain America's taking orders from him. Yeah, um, I mean, and it's cute to have a symbiote. So, you know, you have Jeff the Land Shark symbiote on, you know, well, that's the thing. Is that, is that a, fr- did a friend of yours write that comic? Um, no, was it that? Can I tell him something? I don't know, but it was fucking terrible. So I didn't want I'm gonna put general. Um, no, that's why I don't know who wrote that. It might have been a friend of mine, but um, but I didn't read it, so I don't know. I can't tell you. Okay, that's fair. Okay, that that yeah, we'll, we'll go with that one. Everyone will understand that in comics. Well, yeah. okay. So people in the comments, let us know who we missed because I think there is. It's important to know that it's it's not always bad if you replace the original character. It can work. You just gotta you gotta do it right. There's I think there's a lot of examples of in some terrible. Right. Technically, every single mutant now is going to reply. Well, okay, that hurts. Uh, <laughs> well, Joe, thank you very much. We'll come back on and do something again real quick. Yes, and uh, before, got to mention it because, you know, we're, we're going to get so many comments on this stuff. Yes, Ben Riley. No, that, was, that one sucked. <laughs> Thanks for listening. All right. Yeah. <laughs>